The third mission of universities is to contribute, contribute to, to society. And our main contribution to society are our students, the, the engineers and doctors that graduate from our university. You must know this slogan, it's everywhere. TUV where innovation starts. This is our ambition, to be known as an innovative university. And the truth is that, that we do it rather well. Eh? So in, in the uh, Leiden uh, University ranking, we are number, number one university in research collaboration with industry. And we are continuing to promote activities and, and take action to increase and improve this profile we have. But in this context, it becomes very important to be able to connect, to link knowledge from different disciplines, multidisciplinarity. And we have realized as university that this means we need to deliver T-shaped engineers. And well, for those of you who hear this for the first time, what do we mean with a T-shaped engineer? The, the leg of the T starts, stands for the discipline, so for depth, and, and the, the shoulders of the T stand for the overview, for a broader uh, profile. But of course, the question is, what is the perfect T? How long should the leg of the T be? What should be the balance between the length of the T and the width of the T? Um, right now, in the system thinking group, we are talking about several legs for the T. We are talking about, about the M-shaped engineer. <laughs> so, there is no ideal T. And in my ideal world, we should be able to produce everything between a specialist engineer, a pure specialist engineer, and a pure generalist engineer, and everything in between. We should have a diverse collection of teas. And why? Because diversity is one of the conditions for innovation. Out-of-the-box thinking requires teams of people with different disciplinary knowledge, but also with different backgrounds and different styles. And this sounds like a state in the obvious, or as we say in the, in the Netherlands, uh, like an open door. Uh, but the thing is, the, the key issue here is that all these people in this team need to embrace this diversity. Because, you know, research shows that, that uh, diverse teams are more innovative, are better in out-of-the-box thinking, they are, they are more creative. But this comes at a price, and the price is that in homogeneous teams, people feel they are more effective. They are very happy in this team with people who are like them and they feel much more comfortable in the interaction with the other people in the team. Because the truth is that diversity hurts. Diversity hurts. And it implies a choice, a choice and a conscious effort to step out of our comfort zone. And it's not only an individual choice we all need to make for ourselves, but it's also a choice the organization needs to make to encourage diversity and to facilitate diversity at all levels. And when I um, talk about diversity, I mean, of course, gender diversity, uh, ethnicity, but I also mean that, in my opinion, our, our uh, academic staff uh, is not uh, diverse in a different uh, sense. The way we measure the performance of, of our researchers, uh, what we do is count publications, we count uh, number of citations, we count numbers of projects, this, this system we have 
promotes a competition, but also leads to a monochromatic definition of what scientific excellence is. Because in order to keep pace with... Well, and sorry, and this, that's my point, this is killing <laughs> for innovation. And why is this killing for innovation? Because in order to keep pace, eh, because there are, there are more and more publications every year, so we need to read more and more, and we need to publish more and more, and quicker and quicker. In order to keep pace with this, the only solution is to be narrow. So, so to specialize and specialize and be as narrow as you can, because otherwise you cannot make it. It's, it's impossible. So what happens then? That most of us are working in a, a narrow research field, and we go to the same uh, conferences, specialized conferences every year, and we read the, a limited number of papers written by a limited number of colleagues, and we collaborate in projects within a relatively closed network of, project, of, of colleagues. And these boundaries between disciplines are... Um, what happens is that, that the uh, attention of scientists is taken inwards instead of outwards to, to the society. And uh, it's not only me who says that, there is research that, that shows that uh, this excellent based ranking of journals gives a bias in favor of a monodisciplinary research, and this is bad news for people who want to do interdisciplinary research because it is very likely that they will have a more, more, much tougher time to get funding because the funding agencies we have, eh, the NWO for New England Simples and the uh, Horizon 2020 ERC, they, they are using these numbers. So, don't get me wrong, this, this, this kind of grants we have, uh, personal grants, are extremely important uh, to support fundamental research, which is very important for innovation in the longer run. But by labeling this kind of research as excellent, we label everything else, everything else, uh, multidisciplinary research, applied research, engagement with society, educational innovation, we label everything else as mediocre, it's as non-excellent. And is this really what we want? So I guess you know what my answer is, but I would like to know your answer before we need to stop. So there is a statement again, and now it's the other way around. If you agree with the statement you will see on the screen, you stand up. No, sorry. If you agree, you stay seated. And if you disagree, you stand up. If you disagree, you stand up. Because I'm standing, that's my point of view. Yeah. <laughs> OK, so scientific excellence can only be achieved by exclusive dedication to a single discipline. If you agree, you stay seated. If you disagree, you stand up. OK, I am. Very, very happy to see this, but I'm going to ask one of the disagreeers, and I see one there, and I'm walking straight towards Eddie now. <laughs> because I don't have time, so I only want to know the disagreeing opinion. Yes. Well, just focus in, the, in, in this way. I, I, I wouldn't call it excellence. I, I think when you look broader, take social things into account and uh, look around, that, that, that's, that's more excellent than just focusing on one light. Okay, so you don't really disagree. <laughs> okay, I'm happy to hear that. I'm very happy, very, very happy to hear that. Um, I would love to hear all your opinions, but we have a very strict uh, 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 timing. So, to wrap up, in, in my opinion, we need to work together to dive deep into the waters of fundamental research and then fly high in the sky to overview, to, to, to see the, the connections between disciplines, the connections between application areas and, and societal needs in order to achieve 
real innovation and real uh, impact for society and in this way make a difference. <laughs>